Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sarah and I'm the owner of Peppa Studios and I create hand-painted watercolor and gouache artwork that I often turn into repeating patterns for surface pattern designs. I have recently gotten a bunch of new art supplies both for Christmas and things that I've gotten for myself. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to do an art supply haul video. I haven't done anything like this before, but I'm really excited about all these new tools that I have to play with. And so I figured before I go crazy and lose them all over my apartment, I will do a quick video showing you some of the fun new tools that I have. So let's jump right into it. Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about is this really cool handmade palette that my friend Julia sent for me. She didn't make it, but it looks like it was made by a business called Busy Hands. I'll show you. I really like how kind of irregular, it's very obviously handmade, but I think that's amazing. And I've actually been looking into getting something like this for a while, especially for the gouache that I use. So I'm really excited to play with this. I haven't tried it out yet, so you'll have to stay tuned to kind of see what I think about this, but I'm super excited. It has these cork stoppers here. I'm most nervous about using it around my cats though, because anyone with cats knows that things get knocked off of things. So we're gonna try and avoid that. <laughs> but I am excited to play with this and it's so cute and I think it's a great little size too. So it has five little wells and then two of these bigger wells they can use for mixing. So it'd probably be great for a pretty basic primary palette or something like that to just play with and mix around. So this is a really fun one. Okay, continuing in the palette realm of things, this next one, I don't know if we'll even be able to fit it on camera, but I got this huge massive stay wet palette. So I did not even know that they came in this size. I, can you tell how big this is? Like this, this is big. I don't know the actual dimensions. I'm sure I could figure it out, but it is huge. And so if you're not familiar, a stay wet palette is basically used for things like acrylic or acrylic gouache that will dry out in the air. And well, let me open it up and I'll show you how it works. Ugh. That lid is very airtight, which is good. That's what, it's, that's what it's there for, but it makes it a little bit tricky to open it up sometimes. <laughs> so here's the one that I have. Maybe it has the dimensions on there. I don't think it has the dimension of this one, but basically the way that it works is that you can see here, there's the bottom of this is basically a giant sponge. And then on top of that sponge, you put one piece of this special paper. So you'll see that there's a big sponge here and then basically the way it works is that you'll soak this sponge to get it nice and wet. And then you'll put a piece of this paper on top. And the paint then that you're using goes on top of this paper. And the paint is not gonna get wet like from this sponge, but it's gonna stay wet. Basically, it's not gonna dry out not gonna get watered down from that sponge, but it won't get dry. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? <laughs> so I'm really excited about this. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen that I've done a DIY stay wet palette for several months now, ever since I started painting with Ecro gouache. That was back in September. So been a while now and it works great. And if you're interested, basically the way that I do that is I use like a cookie sheet, like a jelly roll pan or something like that and folded up paper towels on the bottom. I'll get those wet and then I just put parchment paper on the top of that and that works just fine for a stay wet palette. And then usually I'll put like another cookie sheet or something like that on top of it just to minimize airflow. And that's worked really well for me, but it does mean that I am not able to use my cookie sheets. <laughs> and this is just gonna be a way better situation. So I'm really, really excited about this one as well. So I'm gonna move into some of the paper that I got recently. So this is this comes to no surprise to anyone, but I got some more of this Arches cold press paper. It's my go-to, it's my favorite for watercolor, and my sister was kind enough to give me some for Christmas. I love this paper a lot, and I use it a lot, so it's a really great gift. It's super high quality. If you're new in the watercolor world and you're using the really cheap watercolor paper that you might get from the craft store, like for me, I was using the cheapest possible pad that said watercolor paper when I first started. And I was like, wow, I must just be really bad at watercolor because I can't get any results anywhere close to what I'm seeing from other people online. When I switched to this paper, it was like night and day. It was crazy to see the difference. So it was really fun. Totally recommend this paper and I love it a lot. So I will make good use of this one. I got another pad of paper here that I'm really excited about. 
which is the Fabriano Artistico, also cold press, 100% cotton, 300 GSM paper. And this one's great because as you can see, hopefully you can see, it's quite large. And this is also a watercolor block. So what that means is that basically it's glued around the edges here. So when you're painting with watercolor or really wet medium, it's not gonna buckle as much as just like a free piece of paper might. And so you're gonna keep your paper a little bit flatter. So I'm really excited to use this one. I have used Fabriano Artistico paper before, but not this particular one. And I loved the one that I did use. So updates to come here, really excited. Yay. Okay, now moving on to some of the actual art tools that I have gotten recently, starting with all these brushes, woohoo! So these are exciting. As you can see, hopefully, these are flat brushes, a whole bunch of flat brushes. I have traditionally been using round brushes because I started with watercolor and round brushes have been really great for me with watercolor and just general use. I use them all the time for my acro gouache and gouache paintings as well, but I've been really curious to try some other paintbrush styles and so I decided to try these instead. So these were actually also all a Christmas gift. They're a pretty um, inexpensive set, which I think is ideal for me as I kind of try and figure out how to use these and if I like using these. And honestly, I feel like with a lot of brushes, as long as the, like, I think that there are really, really cheap brushes where the hairs just fall out and it's, it's horrible to work with. But I think there's a good middle ground with some brushes too, where you're not spending like $50 for one brush, but it's still a solid brush and it does what you need it to do. So I'm hoping that'll be the case with these. This set with the brown handles, it goes from size one, which is this one, all the way up to size, well, this one just says half an inch, which is this one. It doesn't even have an actual size. <laughs> the second smallest one is a size 10, so it's something bigger than a size 10. So I'm excited to start using these. Definitely keep an eye out on my Instagram stories if you want to see some real-time updates on what I think about them. All right, now moving on to some new paint I got. So I got these Holbein Acro Gouache. Yay, look at them! So I have been painting with Acro Gouache for the past several months, and I've been using the Turner Acro Gouache, and I really like it, actually. it's It's been a great set. It's just the only set that I've ever used before, and I've seen a lot of people online use the Holbein as well, and I'm just curious to see how it is, what I think about it. And so this is a great mixing set, because you have like a warm and a cool yellow, a warm and a cool red, and then this neutral green. So. This will be interesting. I've never actually had a mixing set where I, I don't have blue, I have green instead. So this will test my color theory abilities and my color mixing abilities, but it'll be fun to play with. So I'm excited to see what I can make. And maybe I'll challenge myself to only use these five to create some paintings to really, really get good at mixing colors. Cause that's been something I've been focusing on over the last few months too is not really using anything straight from the tube and getting really good at achieving the exact color that I want just from these colors. I guess maybe I'll cheat and I'll allow myself to use my white that I have, but other than that, I'll stick with these five just for fun, just to see. So updates to come on what I think about the Holbein Acro Gouache. I would love to know if you've used this brand before, what you think about it, because this is quite a bit more expensive than some other options out there. And so if you are an artist, who uses this. I'd just love to hear your take on it. Is it worth it? Do you think it's a lot better than some of the cheaper options? And I'll let you know what I think once I dig into this as well. Okay, so these are kind of fun. I got some of the Prismacolor Cola Erase colored pencils. So I'll show you what they look like. They're basically erasable colored pencils. They come in all kinds of fun colors. I have to hide behind them so that my camera focuses on them. <laughs> but like I said, they're erasable colored pencils. I haven't sharpened them yet, but just like that, you can see here, hopefully. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of people online use these for sketch layers underneath their paintings. So I just, I think it's just a fun tool to play with. And I've got so many colors here now too, so I think that'll be fun. And I've also seen people make, you know, full illustrations using these as well. So we'll see what I do with these. I'm definitely gonna start as using them for the sketch layer under my paintings though. So yeah, I'm excited. Okay, so the next couple of things are things I actually just picked up earlier today because a local art studio is kind of doing a move out sale. And so they had a bunch of art supplies and they posted on their Instagram that they were offering them 
to the public today and so I got up early and I got over there and I got some fun new goodies. So I'm excited to show you what I got. Okay, the first thing is this almost complete set of brush markers from Blick. It's not fully complete, it's missing a couple markers, but uh, it's pretty much complete. And I tested these out when I was there and they, they mostly work, they are used because they were from a working studio, but they're kind of fun. And I was inspired to get these because I recently saw some really, I thought they were really cool illustrations of birds where there was a pretty simple ink outline and then they were colored in using some kind of brush marker like this. And I loved the way that they looked. It's gotten me thinking a bit more about how I could use other medium. The other thing too is that given that I mostly paint, I love painting and it's really fun, but it's a little bit hard to do that like on the go, you know? I kind of need to have like a full painting setup in order to do things. And so in the name of practicing art more regularly, I think it's good to have something that's a little bit more portable. So like these you can throw in a bag and have a sketchbook and draw in the car or something like that. Whereas it'd be a little bit harder for me to like get out my paint palette and paint something in the car, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm excited by the opportunities that these might give me and just to continue to play and figure out a new medium. Okay, another thing that I picked up from that studio sale today was this set of 50 oil pastels. So that's kind of fun too. I, I genuinely haven't used oil pastels since I was in elementary school. So I'm really excited to play with them again. And it kind of is born from the same idea of like, I am just curious to branch out a little bit and to play with things that are different from the paints that I normally use and maybe things that are a little bit more easily transportable when I'm traveling places. And I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous to use it too just because it's like so new to me and so different, but I think it would be kind of fun to play with. And I feel like you can layer oil pastels in a way that you can't with other mediums. So I'm just curious to see how it goes. And I'm, I'm really excited to play with it. So yeah, this is fun. When I was sitting there at the studio, I was like, I was, I was holding this for a long time and I was like, do I need this? Have I ever used oil pastels in my adult life? No, but something about art supplies are like irresistible. You know, I know that those of you who are watching this probably can relate to this. It's like, man, you can't say no to it, right? You're like, I'll, I'll probably do something with it, right? So <laughs> I'm gonna force myself to do it because I got it and I have it now. And so I definitely wanna do something fun. Plus because it was a move out sale, I got it for like super cheap. I got this one for this set for $5. And same with that brush marker set was $5. So yeah, how could I say no? You know, those art supplies, man, they're just so tempting. <laughs> Okay, there are just two more things that I got from that studio sale today, and these are related to storage. So maybe that's not the most fun, but it's been something I've been struggling with for a long time, is figuring out how to store everything, where it can all go so that it's easily accessible to me, but also not just like all over the counter, you know? So I got a couple of things. One I'm excited about is this little, I guess kind of acrylic drawer. It's, it's quite small, um, but these drawers, they come out like that. You can see my ring light here but I think they're big enough, well, they're definitely big enough to fit like brushes and some of my watercolor palettes and things like that, or like my tubes of acryl gouache. So I'm thinking I'll be using this for those kinds of things. You can tell it was used, right? I need to clean it up just a little bit. It's got some scuffs on it, but you know, it's not like it's gonna look perfect when I use it either. But yeah, I'm excited for this one. And the last thing is very simple, but it's just another little kind of plastic container here. Again, I don't have like a perfect vision for what I'm gonna do with this quite yet, but I might put like a mason jar in it or something where I can put some brushes or something to organize those brush pens. I don't, I don't really know quite yet, but this is gonna be used for organizing my art stuff in some way because I could use it. I do have stuff kind of all over at this point, so I need a little honing in if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so that's it. Those are all of the fun new art toys that I've gotten over the past couple of weeks. So I'm really excited to start playing with these and exploring some new mediums. And like I said, I know that those of you who are watching this are probably other people who also love playing with art supplies. And so I feel like a little kid, you know, when I get new art supplies, it's so exciting and so fun. And like, it's honestly the equivalent of like, I don't know, what was really exciting to open up on Christmas when you were a little kid? art supplies. <laughs> I don't know, a new Barbie or something? I don't know. 
it's it's very exciting so i love this feeling and i just can't wait to dive right in so anyway i would love to hear either if you've gotten any art supplies recently that you're super psyched about or if you have any of the supplies that I talked about today, and if you have any thoughts or feelings about them, especially the ones that I said I haven't used before, I'd love to hear your take on them. So if you've made it this far in the video, thank you very much. I would really appreciate it if you could give this video a like because it really does help it get seen by other people. So if you enjoyed watching this video and you're curious to see me painting in action, you can take a look at this video here where I painted the exact same raspberry tart in one hour and then again in 10 minutes and then finally again in one minute, which was kind of crazy. So with that, thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you very soon for the next one. Bye everyone.